Hello, um, welcome to another online event of the Weber Scholars Network. I'm Victor Strizzeri. I'm uh, one of the co-coordinators of the network. And today it's it's my pleasure to, to host this discussion on Max Weber and Walter Benjamin, their relationship, their convergences and divergences. And we are joined today to, to discuss that topic by uh, Lucia Pinto, who will be our main presenter. She is a lecturer and researcher at the University of Buenos Aires. And her, her interests focus on the affinities between Weber and Benjamin, as we will hear today, and their critiques of modernity with special attention to how both understand capitalism, law, technique, and politics. Um, as our discussant today, I'm very glad uh, to have uh, professor Chunji Zhang, uh, pro Associate Professor for German Studies at UC Davis. And after Lucia makes uh, a first contribution about 15 minutes long, uh, Professor Zhang will uh, respond and will uh, make some questions. Lucia will then come back to, to the discussion and we will then open, um, open the floor to to everyone who's participating live, in case you're here with us. Um, if you need any more information about the network, uh, just go to Weber Scholars, uh, I forgot the address, .net, <laughs> weberscholars.net, and you'll find all the information. But without further ado, uh, the, Luthia, the, the floor is yours. Thanks, Victor. Uh, hello everyone and thanks for being here. Uh, I am so grateful about participating in this event uh, of Weber Scholar Network. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Edith Hanke, Victor Strasseri and Brenda Wengat for the idea and the organization of the event for reading previous uh, versions of my presentation. Uh, and for the talks we had about our beloved Max Weber. Uh, thanks also to Chun Shi Thang uh, for sharing the, this event um, with me. Um, it's so stimulating. Uh, this, um, this presentation uh, is uh, part of my PhD research about Max Weber and Walter Benjamin at the University of Buenos Aires. Um, so uh, I am so happy to be here. I, I will appreciate all of your comments and uh, questions uh, you have. Um, so uh, now I will uh, read my presentation. Um, okay, I, I begin. Okay. Um, in his critique of modernity, Walter Benjamin had many interlocutors. One of them was Max Weber. In Walter Benjamin's text, Capitalist as Revolution, written in 1921, he referenced the thesis that Weber developed in 1904 and 1905 in the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. He argued that if Weber had demonstrated that capitalism was a formation conditioned by religion, he intended to understand capitalism as a religion. There is a huge difference between Weber and Benjamin on the possibilities of overcoming capitalism. Weber understood bureaucratization as an occidental destiny which affects capitalism and even socialism. This implies, for instance, that the separation of workers and the means of production cannot be eliminated. This led Weber to seek development possibilities within the capitalist system. Conversely, Benjamin stood up for a revolution that abolished capitalist exploitation and inaugurated a classless society. He understood history as a catastrophe that humans must stop. No one can deny this difference between both thinkers. However, sorry? Yeah. Okay, we are good. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, um, 
I was saying that no one can deny the difference between both thinkers, between Weber and Benjamin, about the possibilities of overcoming capitalism. However, is this all we can say about these two classic thinkers' respective analysis of capitalism? I think the answer is no. This question has obsessed me for the last few years, and I would like to share some intuitions about it so we can think together. In recent decades, a considerable number of studies have focused on highlighting the differences and affinities between the, the thoughts of Weber and Benjamin. The starting point of this discussion was the publication of the previously unknown text Capitalism as Relation in 1985, in which Benjamin explicitly quotes Weber. Within the ensuing debate, there are specialists who point out the big distances between the two thinkers and those who emphasize their affinities. The first group sheds light on the gap that exists between the authors with respect to the possibility of overcoming capitalism and the diagnosis of the secularization of the economy. The second group emphasizes the connections between Weber and Benjamin in terms of, of the affinity between rationalization and myth, as well as their shared intellectual cosmos. In this regard, I would like to contribute to this discussion and propose an interpretation of the Weber-Benjamin relationship with politics as its central element of inquiry. Benjamin, in capitalism as religion, both approaches and distances himself from Weber. Religion has not only been a contributing factor in the genesis of capitalism, but capitalism is a religion. Let's point out the four aspects of this capitalist relation. The first aspect of capitalism is that is a relation of cult, that is to say, one far from dogma and theology. The second aspect reveals something about its rituals, namely their permanent duration. Capitalism, and I quote, is the celebration of a cult without triumph or mercy. There are no weekdays, there is no day that is not a feast day. Benjamin does not describe these rituals, although he tells us that the ritual has no pause. The third feature of capitalist religion is that the cult causes guilt. Capitalist is probably the first instance of a cult that creates guilt, not atonement, says Benjamin. Capitalism generates a guilt that is impossible to atone, and thus leads to a universal consciousness of guilt, even a God of God himself, who must remain hidden and may be addressed only when his guilt is as its zenith, which is the fourth and last aspect of capitalist religion. Guilt, which the Jan Weber play, with the Jan Benjamin, sorry, uh, places in the context of myth, appears in several texts written before capitalist as religion. In Benjamin's critique of myth, guilt appears as a symptom of an, of an order in which there is no freedom, as far as humans cannot atone for the guilt induced by the gods. In this conception, guilt refers to an order in which there is no way out. This, impossibility, this impossibility of atonement leads us to a state of complete despair. I consider, in turn, that Benjamin's diagnosis shows that capitalism appears dangerously as a religion. Thus, the critic of capitalism is a key to understanding Benjamin's analysis of modernity. He refuses to frame it in the binary terms of religious or secularized. It is more complex than that. Capitalism is a system in which humans are trapped and which presents itself as a destiny. As I have said, far from being religion, that, far from being a religion that promises salvation, it drives humans to despair. In this sense, Capitalism as Religion is a text in which the critic of capitalism goes to the core of human existence. This critique is linked to Weber's diagnosis of capitalism as a system that imposes itself as a factually unalterable casing which individuals are fate to inhabit. Capitalism, Weber argues, does not need its religious drivers anymore. Work is no longer guided by a religious faith in salvation as it was for ascetic Protestantism, but rather by human needs. 
Yet, the accompanying process of rank rationalization makes humans unable to choose the best ways to realize their ultimate values, having instead to adapt to a system they do not control. I find this diagnosis of capitalism as a system that imposes itself on humans one of the key affinities between the two authors. So, what to do in the face of capitalism? This is a question that both authors raised. Weber attempted to influence the path to development of imperial German capitalists in the 1890s, giving lectures and publishing articles of public spoke on hotly debated issues such as the rural labor question and the establishment of a stock exchange. He recognized that there is an inevitable global capitalism system in which imperial Germany must find its own development, applying protectionist agriculture feeds if necessary. Towards the end of his life, more specifically in his lecture Socialism of 1918, he examined the socialist revolution's chances of overcoming capitalist slavery. Given the present development of technology, he found it impossible to go, forward, to go backwards, that is to say, return the property of the means of production to workers. He was lucidly aware of an adverse fate, the process of bureaucratization as an unstoppable phenomenon which affects the whole society. Weber's criticism of the socialists in this regard did not target the principles which guided their political practice, namely achieving liberation from capitalist exploitation, but the possibility of its realization. As for Benjamin, his critic of violence published in 1921 supported a, re a revolutionary general strike along the lines of anarchist George Sorel. Benjamin postulated the strike as a political action which aims to disrupt relations of authority based on the administration of violence. Then in the 1930s, he focused his effort in, on the critique of technical development. More specifically, he denounced the destructive character of war technique and proposed a communist revolution as the way to avoid future wars. He also suggests that modern conception of technique as exploitation of nature is linked to capitalism. The revolution seems to him the only way to overcome this. Thus, both Bevers and Benjamin's political analysis of the fate of modernity are linked to their understanding of capitalism. Bever teaches, teaches us that politics should be understood as an action in this world and for this world, which is affected by irreversible and uncontrollable forces. For Benjamin, politics refers to the possibility of interrupting the course of history. Finally, in other words, stating that Weber is a capitalist and Benjamin a revolutionary does not take us very far. Instead, I propose that both converge on a way of thinking about politics, which is to say, in order to unravel the possibilities of modern politics, the conditions imposed by capitalism must be considered. Thanks all for your attention. Thank you, Lucia, uh, for that very interesting talk. Um, so now we go to the commentary from Professor Zhang. Yeah, hi, thanks so much. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, very well. Uh very good. All right. Thanks so much for the invitation. So, um, yeah, it is Anke. So, um, and also, um, it's my great pleasure to be here and see everyone and, uh, and to be able to contribute um, uh, to the discussion on Weber and uh, Benjamin. Um, so, yes, I think it's a very insightful. Um, yeah, Lucia, and uh, thank you very much for bringing these two prominent thinkers together and, uh, you know, putting... Um, very insightful thoughts about them and uh, um, offer us this opportunity. So I have two major comments. So number one, I think um, the similarity, so as you pointed out, you know, between Weber and Benjamin uh, lies in their negative critique of capitalism. So they're both very, um, they were both very negative about capitalism. They're all both very unhappy with capitalism, but um, they use religion in very different ways uh, to connect to capitalism. So, um, yeah, so the similarity between Weber and Benjamin 
lies in their negative critique of capitalism and its interference of human freedom. The differences, however, between them are much stronger, I think. So Weber's analysis of capitalism could be called historical, while I call Benjamin's analysis of capitalism uh, metaphorical. So why I call Weber's analysis of cap uh, capitalism historical is because Weber traces the origin of capitalism and explains the religious source of its seemingly secularized appearance. So that's why, you know, the uh, Protestant, uh, Protestant uh, ethic and the spirit of capitalism, because in Weber's eyes, capitalism is a very, very rationalized um, machinery, you know, um, as a completely secularized uh, social form. But Weber, Weber wants to point out the spiritual um, origin of capitalism. So, so it's irrational source of rationalization. So Weber intends to explain the extreme rationality of capitalism as a consequence of its religious origin. Um, but Benjamin's analysis of capitalism could be called metaphorical because he does not seem to be interested in the historical genealogy of capitalist mode of production. Rather, Benjamin compares capitalism to religion as an irrational and misleading force that controls and damages human body and mind. So the historical and metaphorical difference between Weber and Benjamin, I think, comes from their different epistemology. So Benjamin, as he admits, believes in historical materialism, and related to the philosophies of Karl Marx, Feuerbach, and Hegel. As a Marxist, Benjamin also believes in class analysis of society and class struggle. So that's why the, you know, his support of violence, of uh, revolution. Weber, however, critiques materialism and follows idealism. I think in Weber's um, fundamental philosophical position. And, and Weber emphasizes intuition, uh, value, culture, human uh, freedom, historical individual, you know, as a counterweight to capitalist uh, rationalization. Um, in some, so I think Weber is not against religion, but rather seeks solace in religion, whereas Benjamin detests religion as much as capitalism. Right, so I think Weber's interest, his late interest in world religions actually shows that Weber wants to find solution in religion, whereas Benjamin actually uses religion to compare to capitalism and uh, considers relig religion, or let me, yeah, be, be, be precise, or Christianity something um, evil or, you know, um, less favorable. So Weber is invested in the idea of historical individual, whereas Benjamin is more interested in the collective. Uh, that's kind of my um, observation. And I have another comment is, um, I think, uh, so Weber's idealism leads him to critique bureaucratization, which he considers is a, is a, a rationalization of, um, of uh, politics. Um, and uh, so Weber, promotion, we can also see that in Labour's promotion of the concept of um, charisma um, um, as, as a political um, personality. Um, and uh, yeah, and Weber also uh, seek, um, sought, you know, other alternative rationalisms. Uh, but Benjamin's historical materialism actually leads him to support and believe in revolution as the only means of social reform. reform. Benjamin's historicism leads him to believe in the progress of history towards a higher stage of society through revolution, for example. But Weber's value-free sociology leads him to pay more attention to the areas that rationalism discards, including the psyche, intu intuition, consciousness, magic, um, charisma, and so on and so forth. So these soft things, I think, may change our society toward a better future. That's according to uh, Weber's um, Weber's views. So yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Professor Jung. That was very, very enlightening, very dense. Um, so Lucia, would you like to respond? And then before before I uh, uh, give the floor to Lucia, just want to say that people uh, here in the chat, uh, you can leave your questions, or later just uh, raise your virtual hand to to ask to ask them yourselves if you prefer. But before we go, so feel free to do that already now for both uh, for both of our speakers. Uh, but Lucia, how would would you like to respond? Yes, yes. Uh, thanks, uh, Chunxi Sang, uh, for your comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, you made some extremely good points. 
Uh, I have known a, a lot. Um, so thank you. Um, I, I, I uh, could say that, um, yes, I, I agree with you uh, in the, about uh, the two perspectives, different perspectives uh, from which Weber and Benjamin are studying capitalism. Um, I think that uh, in the case of Weber, uh, there is um, a, a worry about uh, the future of Imperial Germany, uh, and a worry about uh, the development of capitalism uh, in Germany. Um, and, and this, this is uh, how, how uh, it's, uh, its, it's research began uh, and uh, all of uh, the historical background and formation that Weber ha uh, had, uh, which uh, he, he had studied the, um, the, the ancient economy uh, and then uh, he, uh, he studied capitalism. Um, I think uh, this, this is so different uh, from the approach of, of Benjamin. Uh, that uh, I, I want to say that uh, in capitalism is, as religion, um, uh, there is something particular that uh, Marx appears in in the text, but uh, not in a positive way. Uh, that uh, because uh, the young Benjamin is is not uh, uh, is not already a, Marx, a Marxism. Uh, so uh, the Marxism uh, comes later after. Uh, at the middle of uh, the twenties, uh, since uh, there is an, uh, an author that uh, it's so interesting. Uh, we were uh, talking with Victor, uh, which is uh, George Lukacs, and George Lukacs uh, is so uh, important for Benjamin uh, because, um, as Lowit says, as Tiedemann says, uh, that uh, is. Uh, so important in his approach to Marxism. Um, so the critic uh, in the text of capitalism as religion, um, it's, uh, its connection with uh, some uh, Shudis criticism of capitalism. Uh, so to um, make clear the, uh, the how unfair is the system and uh, from uh, a reading of myth, uh, a particular reading of myth that Benjamin took from Hermann Cohen, uh, that uh, relates a uh, relation myth with uh, the impossibility of freedom, uh, because uh, the, the there is a constellation uh, between myth, uh, destiny, and um, yes, myth, fate, myth and fate, um, and guilt. Uh, which is in previously uh, text of Benjamin, like uh, Fate and Character, that is a text of 1919, uh, who Benjamin published in 1921, and the Critic of Violence of 1921. Uh, there, is, there is previous text uh, uh, for capitalist as religion, and uh, we can, uh, in this text, look for uh, the concept of guilt. And, and then uh, make some uh, constellation about uh, guilt and the impossibility of, of freedom in guilt. Uh, because in myth, in tragedy, there is a guilt that is imposed by God and uh, humans, uh, whatever they do, uh, they will to be uh, guilty. Uh, so um, this is... Uh, um, this is something interesting about uh, his approach. Uh, and then, yes, in, in text, uh, in later text, uh, such, um, the, yes, uh, perhaps the, in the decade of uh, 30s, uh, and then in the text of surrealism and the text of technique in the, the, the essays of work of art, and then um, in the theories of uh, fascist, um, uh, see, fascist Germany, uh, it appears, uh, and in the work, uh, in the Passagen work, uh, it appears, uh, yes, the a, a communist revolution in this, in this entire sense, uh, in this, in the, in the Marxist uh, sense. 
Um, so uh, I, I agree with you that uh, I, I like what you what you say that uh, Weber and Benjamin are both uncomfortable with capitalism. Uh, their approach are different, but uh, they are uncomfortable uh, with with the system and the and this the the political uh, approach is uh, or, or the the ways of uh, get out or or how to live with capitalism uh, are different uh, are different also. And I I, I thanks for the for the comments about charisma and and uh, the thing that about rationalization and irrationalization uh, that uh, it's so inspiring to me uh, so so thank you for that thank you lucia uh professor Zhang, do you want to jump in or should i should i ask a question or two Yeah, you can ask other people whether they have questions. Well, or maybe I what I just wanted to briefly um, say to that is I think it's uh, very important to recognize Weber's critique of rationalism, right? So that's uh, Wolfgang Schluchte, you know, Max uh, uh, Jürgen Habermas. So they all wrote extensively on that. So that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's not very very um, prominent in Benjamin's writing, as far as I know. Maybe I don't know that um, well enough. So I think that's important actually to know, right? So because Weber's critique of capitalism is very much entangled with his critique of uh, rationalism, um, and then and then there is Weber's emphasis on intuition, on value, you know, on charisma. So on these so-called irrational things, and also Weber's uh, influenced by the uh, Southwest School um, neo-Kantianism. So like Heinrich um, Ricard, for example, Emil Lask. I think these are all very important sources actually for us to better understand Weber. Um, yeah, please. Thank you. Uh... I guess I have I have, I have I have a question for each of you, but this has been already very enriching. Uh, I like the point that the different critiques that are present in the work of these authors, right? Uh, some they converge the critique of capitalism or of capitalist modernity, we could say maybe even if they don't coincide exactly. Uh, but one missing critique on the side of Benjamin, the critique of rationalism, and I would say one missing critique on the light on the side of uh, Weber is the critique of religion, right? I think, especially in the sense that you put it, uh, Professor Zhang, um, that there is no negative critique of religion in Weber. He there's only a critique in the sense of the analysis, the you know, um, the conceptualization, and um, in his works. But per se, comparing something to a religion is not a form of criticism for Weber. And for Benjamin, it definitely is. And you were saying how there was uh, the epistemological break uh, or difference between the two. I wanted to ask you to, to go a little bit deeper into that. One thing that, that I find interesting is like an author like uh, Ludwig Feuerbach. So that's the basis of the critique of religion uh, in Marxism. And it's someone that Weber completely ignores. Weber who quotes everyone and knows and has read everything it seems there's a total silence on Feuerbach because that doesn't, doesn't really fit uh, that critique of religion, religion also as alienation, a concept that doesn't really fit with this, uh, with his epistemology, as you would say. So I find the fact that where Marxism begins, which is with Feuerbach, uh, is where Weber will stop. He reads every, he quotes uh, historians of religion in Germany until right before Feuerbach, but never engages with him. So I just wanted to uh, definitely, you know, agree with you on that. But I think uh, Lucia stressed the, the political differences between them. And my question would be more how the epistemological and the political uh, connect here. So in, in what ways do the, uh, to the ways of seeing of both, uh, of both authors, how do they connect to their political views, right? So where does their understanding of the world and of uh, being and of uh, thought connects to this different, very big difference in terms of the revolution? I love this, uh, this, this formulation for Benjamin, revolution is the only means of social reform. Uh, that's very, so 
that and for Weber, it's actually the opposite. Social reform is the only possibility because revolution, or at least one that overcomes, uh, you know, capitalist rationalism, is only very partially possible, or if it's possible at all. So, in a way, in their form of seeing um, uh, the perspectives of ch uh, changing the world, you so in the political aspect of their thought, you see a, ref a reflection of how they understand. Uh, social structure, how they understand the role of ideas uh, and and culture in 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 social dynamics in society. Uh, so these are the like the more in these are the more like uh, the questions related more to your what you talk. But I was curious if Lucia, after you could also say a little bit about how you arrived at this PhD topic. And if you have so other sources on Benjamin that you use uh, in the comparison with Weber in your thesis, or if it's if it's if it's is it about the both of them or it's actually broader? And to Professor Zhang, I was I wanted to ask you where uh, how have you run into the work of Weber into your trajectory? When when did he appear, and what's your relationship uh, to his work? Otherwise, everyone, now that the ice is broken, you have no more excuse uh, to also ask other questions. Uh, but I'll go to Luthia and then to Professor Zhang. Lucia? OK. Uh, thanks, uh, Victor, for your comments. Um, Yes, I, I I agree with you uh, in about uh, the point uh, you have uh, stressed about religion. It's so interesting, and thanks for for coming up this uh, this topic. Um, religion, I, uh, I I I agree with you that uh, for Weber is uh, um, is part of his historical approach. Uh, and uh, he, he found uh, some uh, dimensions of the uh, ascetic Calvinism that uh, that perhaps uh, um, put the the individual in a in a complicated um, uh, situation about freedom because uh, he stressed that. Uh, for ascetic Calvinism, the individual is just a middle of God. So, uh, so the, 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 there is a problem with freedom uh, that we can uh, perhaps not Weber, uh, not Weber, Weber hasn't stressed this, but uh, we can think about it. Uh, so, in which situations we are just the middle? Yes, just the middle of, of, of God, just the middle of of other uh, of a system. Uh, so I think uh, there is some uh, here is something interesting. Um, and so, uh, but uh, I agree that this is his approach uh, from relation. So uh, for Benjamin, uh, yes, uh, uh, that capitalism is, is as a relation is a problem, and I think the clue is the is in the in the word uh, as or als. Uh, in Germany, is as a relation. Uh, it's as a relation because uh, uh, capitalism. Perhaps we can, uh, in a in in a reading of Benjamin, we can think that uh, capitalism could promises salvation, lights, uh, and, and he begins. Uh, the text uh, saying most of religions uh, can provide or can promise salvation. Uh, what about capitalism? We uh, we practice every day. There is no pause. Uh, this is a relation of cult. Uh, this is not a, a transcendent relation. This is an immanent relation. So what kind of relation is capitalism? Um, so uh, it, it's... Um, it opened the debate uh, about religion. Uh, is, uh, he, uh, he, he took something from Berber, uh, and then in, uh, in the text, uh, in some text, uh, some notes uh, after capitalism as religion, uh, he, uh, he uh, again uh, go back to Berber, and always uh, to, the, to the thesis of capitalism. 
there are uh, marginal notes, but they are notes uh, in 1936 and in 1939. Um, so um, I think the, the, uh, here we, we have something in the, and there are another text uh, in, the, in the same time as Capitalism as Relation, uh, in which Benjamin um, uh, mentioned the relation in a positive way. Yes, the relation who uh, can, um, uh, which are linked with salvation, with uh, redemption, uh, but but it's not capitalism. Uh, that's that's the problem uh, with capitalism. Uh, that uh, we 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 can think that uh, it it will going to save us, but uh, nothing uh, more um, false <laughs> like that. Um, so, and about the, the political uh, approaches, um, I, I could say something about uh, my, my research in, in this way. Um, my research, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, my research began uh, with Benjamin and his critique of modernity. Um, and then in a seminars, masters, uh, I read uh, the political writings uh, of Max Weber, uh, the last one since 1917. Um, and then I found a link between uh, politics, bureaucratization and capitalism uh, that uh, captured my attention and my passion, <laughs> I became reading Weber uh, as a crazy one. And then um, I, uh, I realized that uh, Benjamin quoted Weber uh, in Capitalism as Relation. And I say, yes, <laughs> we, we have something here. Uh, I, I can study uh, this connection um, this came up uh, as an idea, uh, as, as Pepper said, that the best ideas came up smoking in the sofa. I don't know uh, if it was a good idea, but uh, I, I began to, to read uh, both authors um, uh, as, as, as a whole, I, I thinking as a whole, uh, and what uh, what I my question was about politics, and what I notice is that uh, for Weber and for Benjamin, capitalism was a central question. And when they wrote about capitalism, they also uh, asked themselves what to do with capitalism. So uh, I think uh, this is uh, a political approach to capitalism. Then the answers are different, but the question what to do with, uh, it's not such a, such a matter of study uh, for, for both of them. So um, although the answers are, are different, I think that uh, for both of them, we can not think about politics uh, without consider capitalism. Uh, so I think uh, there was a, a clue uh, about them. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Professor Zhang, do you want to jump in? Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the comments. Um, yeah. What I think about the religion, so Weber and religion is, uh, Weber is not always completely positive about religion, but rather what type of religion or which part in which religion, right? So I think uh, he really critiques uh, Protestantism, Puritanism um, because of their um, extreme rationalization. And Weber also was very invested in the question uh, about when rationalization actually stepped in, in which religion. So for example, in Judaism, and Weber identified um, like a very early phase in which um, some very, you know, like rituals, um, like very so-called irrational rituals were erased or, or uh, pushed aside. And uh, he considered that um, a 
time of rationalization, for example. And also he considers Hinduism and Buddhism very rationalized religion, whereas he considers um, uh, Confucianism, which is, I mean, whether it's a religion is debatable, but uh, Confucianism and Taoism, something he, he thinks is a more balanced religious or, or spiritual um, thinking. So, yeah, and also that I think um, leads to my um, other thought uh, about what you said about politics is uh, actually, I think, yeah, politics as uh, in, in Weber's treatise on Politik als Beruf, um, he actually um, critiqued a, re a revolution, right? So there's uh, like... Um, a passage about the Spartan um, revolution in Munich, I think, and he was uh, very negative about it. I think, uh, yeah, that's actually also interesting <laughs> comments by Weber that uh, we could see that he is uh, rather conservative in that uh, respect, uh, you know, um, quite different from the so-called leftist thinkers and writers. And uh, um, so um, that's why I think maybe Weber sees, you know, like, a charismatic politician as a um, kind of a more harmonious and uh, compromised way, you know, um, to toward a, a politics of his uh, in his vision. So um, uh, politics of the future. Um, and um, so the reason why I got interested in Weber is because of um, this interest in comparative uh, intellectual histories. So, um, yeah, I thought I mean, I, I saw the, the, I was looking for maybe some German Chinese connections, but, and then I, I'm also not interested in exoticism, in the narrative of exoticism, or, or purely buying into a post colonial critique. And I think both are kind of inadequate to the materials I have found. And uh, I found Weber's uh, um, book, um, Confucianism and Taoism, um, very interesting, but the research also on it is a little bit insufficient. So that's why I got more and more into it. So, um, and I think really, so Weber's, a lot of concepts, like for example, I'm writing something on charisma, I think, um, he, the concept of charisma, so Weber was in, influenced by Rudolf Zum, um, Kirchenrecht, uh, right, and also many other thinkers of his um, time, like Nietzsche. But uh, I think one ignored, neglected aspect of Weber's concept of the formation of the concept of charisma is Weber's engagement with China. So with the uh, with Confucianism, and in in his book, he really extensively discussed Confucianism, you know, literati, the Confucian scholar, official, and the charisma. So he kind of used the idea of charisma to interpret um, Chinese Confucianism. So I think in that sense, we can see that the notion of charisma is a, a global historical, a global intellectual historical concept, not only Weber's own creation. Um, yeah, so it has a very rich, uh, I think, intercultural multicultural components um Roger, yeah so that's the reason why i'm you know interested in weber and also i think from weber we can see actually um all kinds of you know like potentials and uh, and interesting aspects of 20th century thought until today actually until the 21st century um yeah so that's it thank you Fantastic. Uh, Lucia, do you want to jump in? Um, or anybody else, any questions while you think? Uh, just an aspect of, it's very interesting that you're focusing on Confucianism and Taoism. This part of, of Weber's work, I think, is kind of dismissed, or is the, it's, yeah, among the least quoted, I guess, from the sociology of religion. If you ever wanted to explore that in the network, we'd be very happy. I know there's some very interesting passages from Weber about how in ancient China the ruler uh, relates to, to the transcendent to, to the transcendental space, the, the whole idea of uh, kingdom of heaven and what role that plays, which is very interesting in how he tries to fit that into how he understands politics and the relation between politics and religion. So I think there's definitely a lot there, uh, despite the limitations of his uh, views on China. Um, yeah, Yanis, Yanis Kitenas has a question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, Victor, and uh, thank you, uh, Lucia and uh, Professor Sam, for your very interesting uh, interventions. 
I want to start by saying that um, uh, actually I proposed uh, um, a May class uh, in Panel University of Athens on Weber and his radical successors. And I was thinking I would include, um, you know, Castoriadis or the Frankfurt School, but uh, uh, it kind of not care to me that to also include uh, Benjamin. But after this uh, wonderful um, event, I will also, uh, if, if uh, the class takes place, uh, I will also include uh, um, a session on, on Weber and Benjamin. So uh, I have um, a question uh, for uh, both a, a question for Lucia and then a question for Professor Dian, uh, 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 if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, so um, for Lucia, I want to insist a little bit on what um, uh, Victor also uh, stressed, if I got this uh, correctly, namely the relationship between uh, epistemology and politics, or, uh, or as perhaps Weber would put it, uh, values, right? Values and um, uh, description of uh, the reality. Because uh, I totally agree, dear uh, Lucia, uh, with what you said, that they both um, focus on uh, what to do with capitalism. We cannot uh, think about contemporary politics uh, without thinking about capitalism. But also, uh, there is the question of what we want to do with capitalism. And there, uh, I guess, uh, for example, uh, it's quite clear that um, while Weber uh, wouldn't be negative against some social democratic reformation, let's say, he wouldn't like um, let's say a self-managed uh, socialist uh, kind of society, and uh, there is there there is also there is always the problem to which uh, to what extent uh, does his um, conception of reality that this cannot be done is uh, conditioned by his um, political values, or to what extent his conception of reality, vice versa. Uh, affects his political values, right? So there is uh, this uh, this sort of uh, interconnection that is uh, hard to elucidate. And um, to Professor Siang, I would like to say that I really liked her um, distinction between two forms of uh, epistemology, and uh, I also uh, like the uh, this uh, sense of metaphorical uh, critique. Uh, we find in Benjamin, but uh, on the other hand, uh, I would uh, I, I I think I wouldn't call a Weber an idealist. And uh, since you referred uh, to both uh, to to to, Weber, to Benjamin's um, historical materialism and to Weber's idealism, I think that we could say that according to Weber. Uh, materialism and idealism are actually um, the two sides of, of the same coin because uh, in a way they both uh, they both are forms of what he could call a uh, emanatismus right that you have an already established form of um, conception about which is the main driving force in history and uh, you don't focus on reality, but rather you try to make reality emanate from either ideal factors or material factors. And uh, I think it, uh, this is, uh, in a way, um, clear when he says that uh, in uh, Protestant ethic, uh, actually, when he says that uh, towards a, a monocausal, let's say, a, materialist explanation of history, I do not want to propose, uh, on the other hand, a monocausal idealist conception. So uh, I was uh, thinking you could perhaps uh, tell us a little bit uh, more about uh, the way you used uh, this term. Uh, so thank you both uh, very much. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, Lucia? Thank you, Shanice and, and Victor for, for your last comments. Uh, I am so glad to hear uh, Janice about uh, 
what you say about radical followers uh, of Weber. Uh, so I'm happy you are thinking to include Benjamin. Um, so um, this, this is uh, so good. Um, you can write me anything you need, information or text about Benjamin. So I, I would be pleased to, uh, to send to you. Um, about what you say, uh, it's it's so interesting. I, I think um, I don't I don't want to say I don't think also that uh, we can uh, approach uh, the Weber and Benjamin answers to capitalism. They are so extremely different. Uh, we cannot deny this. Um, what my, my point is, uh, they are both worried about capitalism. And uh, in, in their work, we can found uh, that they are thinking politics always in relation with capitalism. And uh, that, that, that is a, a point uh, for me. Um, and uh, not, not only capitalism, there are uh, other, other things, other dimensions of modernity that both thinkers uh, take in account uh, as technique and uh, law, uh, the, the, mm. the nature and, uh, and the dimensions of the law and the state, uh, the violence. Uh, there are a lot of uh, connections uh, in between them. Um, so uh, I agree with you about uh, what you say about the, the values and the reality we can also put in, in better terms of ethic of conviction and ethic of responsibility. Um, so I, I think, uh, as Schluter says, that uh, there are uh, both, yes, uh, the values and uh, the responsibility uh, ethic. Um, so, um, and, and I, I was thinking uh, also uh, in the comments of Victor and, and Chunshi about the charisma and the religion. Yes, uh, the, the, uh, perhaps we, we can think that uh, there, is, uh, there is something between values, charisma and, and religion, yes? Because uh, we can, uh, from as Weber says, you, uh, you can not find uh, a rational source of values. Uh, so this politism of, of values uh, is, uh, is something so important. Uh, um, uh, going back to, to your uh, questions about uh, revolution, um, I, I think that uh, Weber don't uh, criticize uh, socialism uh, because of their values, uh, which is uh, um, the freedom and uh, you know, the way out of uh, capitalist slavery. Uh, but uh, he he didn't think this is uh, this come to be true, or, or perhaps uh, the socialist way uh, uh, that uh, didn't. Um, didn't was uh, better from him that uh, that capitalism bureaucratization. Yes, uh, he, he think he thought that bureaucratization is a destiny. So uh, perhaps he he don't uh, see a, a difference between socialist and capitalism uh, bureaucratization. Raymond Aron has uh, write something about that. I think uh, it's, it's something important. Uh, that don't mean that we can uh, think uh, after capitalism, but um, I, I think that, uh, that, that this is uh, something uh, between uh, conviction and responsibility uh, that it is in the in, in the main uh, corpus of political thought of Weber. Thank you, Lucia. Um, before uh, we go to the next question, uh, Professor Zhang, would you like to comment? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to actually um, mention a recent history is like after 1989, 
you know, so the Renaissance of Weber, I mean, Weber has always been important and prominent, but the Renaissance of Weber in um, in East Asia and also in the, in, you know, former Eastern European countries um, uh, is after, was after 1989. And why? Because Marxism has descended. And that's why people found Weber's interpretation of modernity and capitalism uh, more interesting again. So then the, the the major difference between Marxism and Weber is actually Weber does not believe in the material basis, right? So is not a historical materialist and uh, rather Weber emphasizes spiritual force um, as the driving force for capitalism. So Mar Marxism believes in the material basis. So material, material basis and then a cultural kind of um, you know production, um, um, but uh, but uh, Weber actually turned that around. So that's actually why Weber has not been considered um, part of Frankfurt School or you know like a forerunner of Frankfurt School for, or vice versa. So anyway, so yeah, so I do think that Weber and Marxism um, are two different strand, trends, and also I appreciate that there are different um, thoughts in twentieth century. And uh, that give us this rich debate, you know, that we do not have to kind of like subsume everything under one umbrellas, think like, oh, just they have that, they also have that. So I do think there are, we have to make distinction, we have to be clear sometimes in order to make intellectual positions um, meaningful. Otherwise, why are we discussing here? Why do we spend time on these things? Be not because I don't. I don't think that the world is should, should be clear cut, you know, personal relationship. No, but I think intellectually speaking, we need precision. And I think these thinkers showed us how to do that. Um, that's why I made the distinction also. And I I do think Benjamin, you know, um, as Victor pointed out, very strongly uh, influenced by uh, George Lukács. And Benjamin, you know, in this famous kind of metaphor, you know, he used for the angel of history. Right, he says, as a historical materialist, I blah blah. So, Benjamin does believe in historical materialism, whereas Weber does not. And Weber also is historical, uses historical method, but he is not a historicist. But I think Benjamin is a historicist because historical materialism includes historicism um, in its uh, very special form. But anyway, you don't have to agree with me. This is just only my own take, you know, after reading all this stuff. All right, go ahead. All right, uh, maybe you can go back to Alice if he wants to respond, but uh, Masahiro Noguchi has a, has a question. Go ahead, Professor Noguchi. So, thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful talk, Lucia. Yeah, I have a question about political judgment in 1919 and 1921. Yeah, Max Eva gave a lecture in Munich in January 1991, yeah. <laughs> as you all know well, yeah, political values. Yeah, fair, he predicted a coming era of reaction, political reaction. Yeah, his prediction came true as Munich became the center of political reaction, the yeah, national socialism in the 1920s. I agree, yeah, Benjamin's work is excellent. But I think Max Weber's political judgment in political belief was accurate when compared to critique of violence. I am interested in hearing your thoughts on the consequences of political reaction and the rise of fascism. Yeah, that is my question. Thank you. Great question. Lucia? Okay, thank you, uh, Masahiro Noguchi, for your question. Um, I I am not uh, quite sure about um, about what you uh, asked about uh, the the whole thing uh, of of uh, customs, but um, I can say that uh, in in this um, Vortrag in this uh, of 1919, uh, politics as beruf, uh, there is um, a, a critic uh, 
to violence uh, that we can uh, um, make out in the in the text in the Vortrag, but um, and it's so relation uh, with the historical events that are uh, happened as you say um we can put uh, in comparison with uh, the critique of violence uh, of Benjamin on 1921 two years uh, later uh, but uh, with uh, Germany uh, in conflict uh, as well. Uh, so uh, their approach to violence and to the use of violence is, is so different uh, because uh, for both of them, uh, violence is relation with politics. Yes, uh, but uh, for Weber, uh, there is uh, um, a thing that it is so important that is the legitimacy of violence yes uh, as the state uh, has uh, have so um for benjamin uh, violence could be uh, could be a revolutionary violence uh, but uh, he denounced the violence uh, uses an authority uh, so uh, their approach uh, to violence are so different. Um, we can uh, Benjamin uh, goes to Be goes to uh, the not, not quote with Weber, but uh, in the text of 1921, uh, he relation uh, the, he relates the state with violence. Uh, in a in a deeply way, um, so um, this is uh, this is all all I can say. I I I will I will think more about about this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I guess it's it's an interesting the the question maybe of the relationship to Georges Sorel, right? Uh, because yes. because then he will be the, he will also be read by the fascists. Uh, so maybe it's also a question that goes in that direction. Is it this is something you also approach right in your PhD, Lucia uh, Weber and Sorel? Yes, yes, I uh, I, I read uh, Sorel's reflections of violence. Uh, because uh, he had a lot of influences on, on, on Benjamin, uh, Benjamin quotes Sorel and the strike revolution. And uh, the Sorel seems to him uh, a solution. <laughs> uh, the general strike uh, as an anarchist, in an anarchist way, uh, was, was the solution in the 20s for Benjamin. Uh, so uh, there are uh, differences uh, about uh, in their approach of myth uh, in Sorel and Benjamin, um, but uh, yes, uh, he and and he um, he are so influenced by the the relation between violence and uh, moral. There is a, something like a moral violence. That uh, you can uh, you can use uh, to end uh, and to end an authority order, uh, and and that's uh, that was really important for Benjamin. Yes. Thank you, Lucia. Anybody have any last question? Oh, we have a. Uh, it's just uh, Eugenia thanking Lucia. Um, and let me see, my question would be, what would be the contribution of studies from uh, from South America on these authors? Uh, yeah, uh, Professor Zhang spoke a little bit about the reception of Weber in East Asia, um, which and East, in Eastern Europe after 1989, for, for obvious reasons, at least uh, re related to the fate of socialism and of the role of Marxism. Um, in, in universities and in, in general culture and, and, and ideology in this, these spaces. Is, would you say, would you like to say anything, Lucia, about the reception maybe in, a, in, in Argentina of, uh, of Weber and, or, or, and of Benjamin? Sorry. Uh, 
Yes, thank you, Eugenia, for your question. Um, I think that um, uh, obviously for me, Weber and Benjamin, they are so important uh, uh, to, they, they, they make me think a lot. Um, and besides me, I, I think that uh, it could be interesting. Oh, indeed, it is so interesting, Benjamin and Weber, uh, authors in, for students. Uh, there are authors that uh, in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, we read a lot. And they are part of our uh, career programs. Uh, so this is so nice. Um, I think uh, both authors uh, we can we, we can think they are important uh, because uh, as we are all have said in this presentation, there are a lot of uh, topic of modernity that their works uh, um, uh, are, are in their works they are approached to these topics, uh, religion, politics, charisma, uh, bureaucratization, capitalism, uh, law, justice, and they are uh, also contemporary topics uh, today. Um, uh, I, I think uh, if, uh, if you allow me, um, uh, particularly in Argentina, um, we are uh, we are also in a, a problematic relationship uh, between politics and economy, politics and capitalism. Uh, you know, uh, this year we are celebrating 40 years of democracy. And we are so glad for this. Um, we um, we have democracy also uh, the economic development is still a problem for us uh, uh, we have uh, we are suffering a lot of problems economic problems uh, uh, there is a huge uh, poverty in Argentina almost 40 percent uh, we we suffer inflation. So uh, there, are a, there is a link between politics and economy uh, that is so uh, so contemporary. Uh, so I think these authors uh, can contribute to this discussion. Thanks Thank for you, the Lucia. question. And this is a great segue just to talk about uh, how happy I am with the configuration of our meeting today. Also, that it's probably getting late in China, uh, where uh, Junjie Zhang is based. Uh, she was very nice to, uh, or we had to find a time uh, that was possible in, in South America, in Buenos Aires, in Western Europe, and in China for our meeting today. That's why we're, we have it a little bit earlier than, uh, than we thought. But that's exactly what the purpose of the network is. Uh, is that we we get an insight on Weber and uh, related thinkers from different spaces, different traditions, and different disciplines, right? We have somebody from political theory and someone from German studies, uh, nobody from neither philosophers nor sociologists in a discussion on supposedly authors that belong to these areas, right? Uh, this is something that's also... And we have a dialogue between a, a younger researcher and a more senior, more experienced researcher. That's exactly what we uh, are trying to do with this network so that the kind of closed, closed off islands of reception, um, you know, connect and that we also go beyond just the text, uh, especially in terms of what Lucia was saying, uh, the conditions in which we are, we are doing research and why Weber might not make so much sense uh, in, might, might, might make less sense in Germany than he does in Argentina or in East Asia, uh, which is, again, we also have uh, participants from Japan today, from Greece, from South America. Um, this is a configuration we also had in the last meeting. So uh, if you want to say any final words, uh, I just wanted to thank you both again for the, for the really interesting presentations and the discussion. This will be available online uh, for people to check out later and on our website. You're also welcome to submit any something in writing for the for the website that you reflected based on this on this conversation. 
But otherwise, uh, I would just uh, pass to uh, Lucia and, and Professor Zhang just for the last words. I want to say thank you for to all of you. Uh, that was so inspiring to me. Uh, thank you for your comments, especially Chun Shi Tang. Um, and I, I hope uh, this debate continues uh, in, uh, in many ways. So thanks. And it is so interesting. Uh, I think uh, we did magic uh, as uh, converge uh, the different uh, areas and, uh, and time schedule. So thank you. Thank you again. Right. I also wanted to say, uh, to say thank you so uh, for everyone and uh, for this interesting discussion. And also, I wanted to ask uh, Edith Hanke, so do you have anything to say? I haven't heard anything from you today, but you coordinated everything, so please. <laughs> yes, I'm glad to see you. And uh, just wanted to ask you, when will you be back to Germany again, to Berlin? And maybe then we can meet and uh, continue the talk. <laughs> Right. I, I will uh, go to Berlin. Uh, I will give a talk actually in Berlin on the 23rd in June in the um, Deutschen Historischen Museum. So, but it, it's a talk about German colonialism. So, okay. but uh, I'll be in German. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Germany late June. So maybe I'll come, come over to Munich. Um, yeah. Yeah, be Would great. be great. <laughs> so it was nice to see you. And <laughs> thanks again. Yeah, thank you. All right, so I think uh, I'll close our session today. Uh, thanks everyone for being here, also for our, uh, for everyone who came in uh, to participate live in the discussion. And and we will see you next time. Next time we'll probably discuss Weber and the stock exchange, but uh, yeah. you will hear more. You'll hear from us soon. And after that, in June, we also have uh, uh, politics as vocation, politics as beruf with Masahiro Noguchi uh, and uh, Sergio Damata, professor from Brazil, discussing the reception of politics as vocation in Japan, Germany, and Brazil. So look uh, look out for the, that will be in June. We'll be in touch. Go to the website web, babyscause.net for more information. And thank you until next time.